na iwa sa ningaw na ni Bakatara, baka binibin na tayo. Bula! Oi, eu sou a Sala Bilawa. Não vou ter que ir ao menos de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou agarrar um boca. Caco Neva Latana, não me suíne ser sari. Na Caixa Maria Andola Loma, Leão Neva Nininau. O Ngori que é de mais na de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou agarrar um boca. É na Bula FM. Namban 2 é na Serre. Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Our short bulletin tonight, Fiji's first casino developers given one week to start construction and Fiji's preferential market access to the European Union to end soon. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The government has given the developers of Fiji's first ever casino a new deadline. 100 Sands Limited has until next week to begin construction. In another new development, the owners have reportedly decided to change the site and will be building the casino near Denarau in Nandi. Christopher Chand with the story. Developers of the $290 million casino complex, 100 cents, did not meet the previous deadline set for last Sunday. The company has requested for more time. They've requested for a uh, extension to the deadline and uh, they've been given uh, another week until the uh, beginning of next week to commence construction. Sayed Kayum says if construction does not start next week, then they are likely to lose their license. We've given them one extension and if they don't uh, agree to it, then uh, obviously uh, we need to uh, uh, rethink uh, the way forward in terms of uh, whether we call for new tenders or expressions of interest. Uh, but uh, the, the matter at hand is that they've been given an extension and uh, we hope that they comply. This is the site where the casino was to have been originally built but this will change. Uh, they've also uh, requested uh, that uh, they do uh, change the site uh, where the casino will be built. Um, and uh, so uh, we've given them that approval also. 100 Sands is said to be addressing issues concerning the project. Emails sent to the company's executive, Larry Clonch, remain unanswered until today. His local mobile phone has been switched off. The company promised to employ 1,600 locals during the construction and operation of the casino. Christopher Chant, FBC News. Fiji's preferential market access to the European Union will soon end. Speaking in Lombasa yesterday, the head of the EU Pacific delegation, Andrew Jacobs, says on average the price paid by the EU to Fiji is more than twice the international market price. This is coming to an end as the EU has been obliged to reform and open its market to more competition in order to comply with the World Trade Organization ruling. The end of the Fiji sugar, cane, sugar regime, sorry, the EU sugar regime doesn't necessarily mean a lower price, but an EU price which is closer to that of the international market. This will inevitably lead to more market volatility and therefore more risks and vulnerability for, for, for farmers in the next few years. Jacob says the EU is well aware of this problem and is providing assistance for sugarcane farmers and their families to cushion the impacts of industry restructures. Attorney General and Minister for Justice Aisad Kayum says the government will not react to allegations raised from blog sites. He was reacting to a recent statement issued by the United Front for Democratic Fiji alleging that the AG and the Prime Minister of Renge Mbani Marama are each collecting upwards of a million dollars a year in salary and benefits. Saad Kayum says the statement shows how irresponsible UFDF leaders are. I haven't seen the, any of the statements, but uh, we have heard that they're making allegations based on blogs. So as a matter of principle, uh, you know, we don't respond to any um, sources of information coming from blogs, because as you know, and as we've seen in the past, people have made up information. It is quite uh, interesting to see that uh, so-called responsible political party leaders are uh, getting the source of information from blogs. It does not say much for their own credibility. 
UFDF is calling on the Prime Minister and the Attorney General to disclose their salaries to the public. Queen Elizabeth's 87th birthday celebrations last night provided an opportunity for the British government to reaffirm its support for democracy in Fiji. Dignitaries and government officials were invited to Gordon House, the official home of the British High Commissioner in Suva. Akasi Tatale was at the celebration. Hundreds turned up to wish Queen Elizabeth a happy birthday. Quite fitting since the monarch has always held a special place in Fiji. The UK as a friend and a partner to Fiji stands ready to help deliver the inclusive and incredible elections we were striving towards. There was a more serious note to the whole affair. Our progress towards elections next year couldn't go unmentioned. We sincerely wish the people of Fiji the very best for a successful, free and fair election and look forward to welcoming Fiji back into the Commonwealth family where she belongs upon their conclusion. Having registered half a million voters and four political parties should be an encouraging sign for international observers such as the United Kingdom. The UK is also in the battle to prevent climate change. The UK has joined the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme, SPREP, the region's leading body on climate and environmental issues. So we can work directly with governments in the Pacific and help them to cope with the consequences of climate change. This is the first time in 25 years that Fiji hasn't marked the Queen's birthday with a public holiday. Akusita Tale, FBC News. 146 child labor cases were recorded in the country in the first five months of this year. This has the Labor Ministry concerned as we mark World Day Against Child Labor. Shireen Lata reports. So far this year, the Labor Ministry has pulled out around 24 children working in hazardous work conditions. There are concerns for those who are still involved. The consequences of child labor on the life opportunities of those affected are difficult to measure. No price can be placed on the cost of lost childhood or the psychological and the emotional damage suffered by the children trapped into child labor. Today, the definition of child labor not only means forcing children to work. In any situation at home where a child is deprived of education due to a family commitment, such as crop harvesting, looking after young siblings, uh, selling produce, attending to traditional and religious commitments, to name a few, is in fact child labor. This has forced the ministry to implement the hazardous occupations prohibited to children under 18 years of age order, which came into effect last month. This is the first list for Fiji, and we are proud of our government's commitment in ensuring that we work towards the goal of eradicating the problem of child labor, and ensuring that we provide the right environment for our children to grow. In a preliminary child labor survey done in November last year, 79 secondary and primary schools in the country has confirmed child labor cases. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama today officially opened the head office of Higgins in Nandi. The complex is the main depot for the New Zealand-based contractor doing roadworks in the Western Division. The government is spending $420 million to improve our roads this year. Higgins is one of the three New Zealand-based companies Morning, contracted in Fiji for the next four years. Bani Marama says for years our roads have been neglected. Fixing Fiji's road is in the hands of uh, Higgins in the west, uh, Fulton Hogan in uh, highway stabilizers in the central division, and uh, Blacktop in the north. All are New Zealand companies with uh, strong reputations. Coming up on FBC Sports, Prime Minister of Renge Mbani Marama officially opens ANZ Stadium and Lombasa to break 14-year drought of Fiji Fact title. Aapki shadi hone wali hai. Panch panch bachche honge. Panch panch. Panch panch. Hi, I am Saheli Venu. Listen to me, I am FM, I am now at 9.00 am. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done.
Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Welcome back. You're watching FBC Sports. The NZ Stadium in Suva, boasting modern state-of-the-art facilities, is now officially open. Charlin Dalvakadaka was at a special ceremony to mark the occasion last night. Members of the government, sporting fraternity, diplomats and the private sector were among guests invited to the celebrations. The opening of the ANZ Stadium marks a significant moment in the history of sports in the country. Chief Guest Prime Minister Komodo Vorengembain Morama acknowledged the hard work put in by stakeholders involved to give the country a platform from which to launch future sports stars. Of course, this is the pinnacle of that effort. The venue where the best performers will eventually come to represent the district and in many cases, their country. Striving to be the region's best and the world's best. In fact, it's already happened. Four athletes who competed in the co games have qualified for the IAF World Youth Championships in Ukraine. This is a remarkable achievement. The revamped ANZ Stadium is regarded not only as an iconic sporting facility, but also an economic asset. A national facility that we can all be proud of and which for years to come will contribute to our nation's well-being, provide for our entertainment and contribute to our economy. The facilities have raised the standards of sporting and stadium facilities in Fiji and will certainly catch the eye of international event organizers in the future. Talendo Kavaka, FBC Sports. The Lombasa football side hopes to break a 14-year drought in the Vodafone Fiji fact as they intensify training with two days remaining for the tournament to kick off. The Mbamba Singer Lions started training three times a day from last week as they hope to turn around their luck in the Fiji fact. Lombasa last won the Fiji fact in 1999, but since then have, has made five appearances in the final, the last one in 2011 against Rewa. Lombasa faces Suva in their opening game on Saturday. The last time the two teams met, Suva won 5-2. With capacity crowd expected for this game, the young Lombasa team, guided by captain Fosiano Calisito, will have a lot to prove. Kelly Slater has retained the Volcom Fiji Pro 2013 surfing competition in Tavarua. This is his fourth win at cloud break after defeating Australia's Mick Fanning. Slater yet again managed a perfect 10 to total 19.80 points, an extra 3.93 ahead of Fanning's total of 15.87. Next up for these world surfers is the tournament in Bali. <laughs> Suva, Savo Savo and Lombasa had some cloudy periods with showers today, while the westerners Nandi, Lautoka and Ba had fine weather in the morning and cloudy periods this afternoon. Nandi recorded the highest temperature on the charts today, hitting 32 degrees. Suva recorded the lowest at 28 degrees. For tomorrow, there will be cloudy periods in all centres. Suva, Savo Savo and Lombasa should expect some showers, while in the west it will be fine. Outlook for Friday, some showers over the northern and eastern parts of the group are fine elsewhere. And recapping our headlines, Fiji's first casino developers given one week to start construction. Fiji's preferential market access to the European Union to end soon. And British government reaffirms support for democracy in Fiji. On to our poll question, should we have a national ID card? As always, visit www.fbc.com.fj to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's all for tonight. Good evening.
Nimbula, Medango Nimilote Nai Sarotamboa. Nama kia omina rua kina ona na vya kavi moni te kina vaka raumbuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipa ka baro taki nini reko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia okina. Nisa mbulo binaka, oya wane kama na langi, oni nandoro mwezi yao, maina ziwa kina ruwe na visinga, maina mwoni iti kina waka rumbuka, na Radio Fiji wana ndome ibiti bongani vya nyanu. Na mwaka talengana vya ngona sasi vya nye, na tina kaloko na vya mbongi ni buki lulu. Kena vya mamani walu na vya mbongi ni waka ruwai, maina mbuza ni walu, ninge na mwaka.